Welcome back to another video and today we'll be going over the best free photo editing software that you guys can use to make your thumbnails this year in 2020. I'll be going over with you step by step and showing you the best ways to make your own custom thumbnail. With that said, let's get started with the video. Okay guys, so the photo editor that we're going to be using today is called PhotoP. Now this photo editor is very reminiscent of Photoshop, but in the light version. And the best thing of all, you don't really have to download it. You can just use it online as it is right now. And as you can see, if you use Photoshop before, it almost has all the tools that Photoshop contains and it's pretty easy to use. One cool thing that I like about PhotoP is that you can also open Photoshop files in this photo editor. So if you guys ever download any Photoshop files from YouTube or anywhere else and you don't have Photoshop, you can use PhotoP to edit it, which is really cool in my opinion. So to start this out, all we have to do is just select on new project and then we should appear with a new window. So as you can see, we have our settings right here, the width and the height. But the first thing I'm going to do is rename our project. Now I'm just going to put a simple name like thumbnail and then just make sure your width and your height is 1280 by 720 because that is the YouTube recommended size. In our background, we're just going to change it to transparent. Once we got that, we can select on create and we should be open with a new blank template to work from. Okay, so the next step is choosing our background and adding it to our thumbnail. Now there's either two ways you can do it. One is actually making it from scratch, basically choosing a color and adding more filters on it. Or the other way is literally going to Google and searching up YouTube thumbnails. In Google, there's so many images to choose from and all you have to do is just choose one and then save it onto your computer and we are ready to go. Now that we have our background selected, all we have to do in order to open it is go to file and then open in place. This will allow us to open the file and place it onto this template. So I've named my background and I'm just going to choose it right here. And all I'm going to do is hit open. As you can see, it's loading and then our background image has appeared. Now, all I have to do is basically stretch it out to the format that I want it so it can fill up the whole canvas. Now that it's filled up, it looks pretty good. And all we have to do is just add some effects to it. Now, one of my most common effects that I add to any of my backgrounds is a filter and especially a blur filter. So all we're going to be doing is make sure you have your background image selected, go to filter and then go and hover on top of blur. And then from there, we're just going to choose Gaussian blur. This will implement a little Gaussian blur around it. And you guys can actually mess around with the opacity and radius of it. So I'm just going to be moving the slider here so I can see which one I like the best at what level. And the cool thing is that it lets you preview it. So all you have to do is click on the little preview button in order to see the original and click it again to see the applied effect. But now that I have the effect how I want to, all I have to do is just hit OK and the effect is applied. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is adding our text. Now what I'm going to be doing is coming down here to this little folder icon or paper icon and just make a new layer. From there, I'm just going to go to the tool section and use the text box or text tool. And all I have to do is just wait and then press on the background. Now I'm just going to put the size as big as I can. And right here, we're just going to pull this drop down menu so we can see all the fonts that PhotoP has to offer. Now, as you can see, PhotoP has many fonts that they offer, but one cool feature is that you can actually load your fonts from your own computer. If you have ever downloaded your fonts from dafont.com or any other font source that you guys may use. But right now I'm just going to use the one that they have in stock. And I'm just going to type in one of my favorite fonts that I found in PhotoP, which is Squad 1. All I have to do is just select on it, close out the little tab, and just start typing what I want on my thumbnail. And from here, I can type anything I want, and I can actually arrange all the words anywhere in the background. So I'm just going to be arranging them so they look good and neat. Once I got all the words arranged, the next step is adding a effect to our words. So for now, I'm just going to use the first text, which is grow. And all I have to do is just choose blending options. And as you can see, this little menu has appeared. And all I'm going to do is just add a color overlay. When that's done, I'm just going to hit OK. And we're going to go to the next thing. What I want to add is a little stroke, which is basically some color around the edges of the text. I'm going to use the color type and I'm just going to put the stroke in black. Then I press on OK again. For this, I'm just going to change the size to 9. And you guys can use any settings that you want. And feel free to pause in the video whenever you need in case you just want to get these settings down. So as you can see, the text is looking good. But one more thing that I'm going to add is a drop shadow. 
for this. I'm just going to change the settings a tad bit here and feel free to pause in the video whenever you need in case you just want to get these settings down. And you guys can use any personal preference when adding these settings to your own thumbnail. Now we're just one step closer and we're just going to add our final effect which is our outer glow. I'm going to just use the outer glow and put it as white. Hit OK and we're just going to mess with the settings one more time. So our opacity I'm just going to put it 100% and our range I'm just going to move it all the way to 1 and our size I'm going to set that at 12. And as you can see there is a little outer glow. In our blend mode, we're just going to use it as normal. And that's pretty much all the effects that I'm going to be adding to this. Now, if you guys want to add more effects, go right ahead. But these are the, just the basic text effects that I like to add on my thumbnails. But once we're all done with that and you're satisfied on how your text looks, all you have to do is just hit OK to save all the effects. Now, one thing that I do like about Photopea is that instead of putting all these effects manually on each of your elements, one cool thing that they allow you to do is just copy the layer styles. So you're just going to right click and hit layer styles. You're just going to hit copy. Then we're just going to go to our next word, your, and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to do layer styles and then hit paste. And as you can see, we can paste to all of our words the same exact styles instead of going in and manually adding them, which I think is really cool and helps save a lot of time when you're doing any sort of graphic design. And it's a cool feature that Photo P has implemented here. Okay guys, so the next thing that we're going to be adding to our thumbnail is adding an image. Now like our background, it's very simple to open an image. All you have to do is go to file and open in place. I'm just going to be looking for a specific image that I'm going to be using for our thumbnail. And once I got it, I will just open it and it will load and it will appear in our thumbnail. Now this little image, I got it off of Google. So basically you have to do the exact same thing. Just go to Google and then type in the growth arrow PNG and make sure the image is PNG because what this does is that it allows you to have a transparent background instead of a colored background, making it way more easier for us to edit this in our thumbnail like you see right here. So this image has a little things that I just want to tweak and adjust like this little bar on both sides. So the first thing we got to do in order to edit our image is go to the image itself, right click and hit rasterize. This will allow us to edit the image. Next, I'm just going to use the eraser tool and I'm just going to mess around with the size and stuff. And I'm just going to start erasing those little bars that we see. And I'm just going to do it carefully so I don't erase the actual arrow. Now that's done, I can just move it around, but I just want to make it a little bit bigger. So what we're going to do next in order to make this arrow bigger is to make sure that you're on the layer image, go to edit and select free transform. Now a little box should appear around your image and that's just going to let you transform and move the image however you want to. Now that I adjusted the arrow how I want to, the next step is actually adding those text effects onto my arrow. So I'm going to be doing the exact same process. I'm just going to right click and hit layer styles and hit paste. And as you can see, those exact same effects are on my arrow now, but I'm just gonna do it a little bit different. Since everything blends in together, I wanna make it a little bit different. So I'm just gonna hit on that little arrow and a whole file of the effects should come down. And I'm just gonna mess around with it to see what effects I want on the arrow and which ones I don't. So for the arrow, I'm thinking of just going with the outer glow and drop shadow. And now that we got that done, I can just hit the arrow again. And now I can delete this layer one and we're done adding our finishing touches to our thumbnail. Okay guys, so now that we're finished making our thumbnail, the last thing we have to do is save it and export this particular thumbnail. Now in order to do that, all we have to do is just go to file and come down and the first thing we're going to do is save it as a PSD. This basically allows us to save this thumbnail as a file so whenever we have to come back and edit it again, we can. We're just going to use this file and use it on PhotoP and you'll be able to edit and change anything else that you guys may want to change. Then the next thing we have to do is go back to file and we're just going to use export as. Now for this format, we're going to be exporting this image as a PNG, which is the best way to save an image if you're going to use it as a thumbnail or any other project you guys may be working on. So as you can see here, we have our settings and formats. So make sure your format is in PNG, your width and your height match 1280 by 720, and you want your quality to be 100%. 
and then from there you're just going to hit save now you saved your image as a file and a png file so you guys can use this image for a thumbnail or any other projects you may be working on but that's pretty much it so if you enjoyed this video consider subscribing because i have more tutorial videos like these where i'll show you so many tools that you guys can use for your own youtube channel but i do suggest that you guys watch my previous video on the other best photoshop alternates so you guys can have a variation to choose from so that's pretty much it for the video guys let me know what other videos you would like to see this year in 2020 but that's pretty much it thank you guys for watching and i'll see you on the next one